start this review from the conclusion and I would dare to say this is one of the best city scooters to ride in 2023. And I know what you're thinking, it's not a city scooter, it's an off-road scooter. I saw it on Kugu website, they said it's an off-road beast. As a matter of fact, it's not. It's like an SUV, it's not an off-road truck. It looks like an off-road truck, but it's not meant for serious off-roading. Yes, it has an off-road tires. Yes, it has a really, really cool four-arm suspension, which is very useful riding in the city, but it's nothing even close to being an off-road vehicle because it doesn't have second motor. The scooter has rear mounted 1000 watt motor which accelerates me 88 kilogram rider to the speeds of around 40 kilometers 41 kilometers per hour on the flat road. I have to mention that going downhill or if you are lighter rider going downhill I saw speeds 50 plus so potentially if you are lighter rider you can reach speeds above 50 kilometers per hour so it's a decent speed to get me longer distances the brakes of the scooter are fantastic the scooter has 20 amp hour battery pack which will be enough to go around 40 kilometers and of course there are exceptions if you weigh 32 kilograms and you're going downhill downwind all the time you can potentially make 80 kilometers which are claimed by the seller The acceleration of the scooter is good and I would say as expected with a 1 kilowatt motor. As you can see 50cc non-electrical scooter is accelerating a little bit better. So it's nothing that will throw you off the scooter but it's decent for the riding in city conditions. And if you are wondering what the hell is on my right foot, that's folded saddle. Yes, you are completely right. This off-road scooter also has a saddle that has a suspension. It's actually pretty soft and comfortable to ride if that's something that you're looking for. The scooter can be folded by a unscrewing this knob and pulling on the security thing and it has my phone on it so I need to be very careful and then you can lock it with the hook here and you can carry it around if you're strong enough because this thing is quite heavy. Who is this scooter for? This scooter is for someone who needs something faster than standard 25 kilometers per hour, something with a really good suspension that doesn't mind either carrying heavier scooter up the stairs or doesn't need to carry it that often but also doesn't plan to go crazy off-roading because one wheel drive won't be enough. Would I recommend this scooter to buy to my friends and family members? Yes I would. The build quality is fantastic, the acceleration is good, the overall enjoyment of the ride is pretty cool. You can do wheelies, it's a nice, uh, nice to control, really bouncy and soft suspension. I don't know what else we want from a scooter. So that was my quick conclusions. And for the rest of you who are going to stay in the video with me, let's deep dive into the details. Let's go. This is one big of a box that arrived today and this box came from Kugu. Thank you Kugu for sending this. Now we're doing it. Inside the box you will find the scooter itself, the saddle, a pump to inflate tires, set of tools and user manual with 2 amp charger. The assembly of the scooter could take as little as 5 to 10 minutes but Kugu chooses to pack it in this white foam. Thank goodness, flip off. You need to clap so hard that you generate enough wind and it all just flies away just like this see easy and in case you don't want to clean the mess my way you can go back and do it in your old ways all the jokes aside you just need to unfold the scooter install the handlebars adjust the angles of the grips and the screen and you are ready to go you need headlights on with this one these are controlling the blinkers, both in front and back. And you also have indication on the screen. And 
It is obvious that Kugu Kairin for the G2 Max have chosen good quality materials. The handles feel nice and soft, they have ergonomical shape. The brake handles are made out of steel, same as the mount of the entire handlebar. Buttons feel a bit plasticky, despite that they operate really well. I'm not gonna lie, I enjoy the orange and black combination, it makes the scooter look really good. I think this is a great design of a folding mechanism because you can tighten it up and you can do lots of jumps, drops, wherever you want. Your folding mechanism does not become loose and it lasts for years. The scooter has adjustable handlebar height, which is about 89 to 103 centimeters from the deck. The deck is about 19 centimeters wide and it's covered with soft rubber that doesn't slip even in wet conditions. And there is a really cool looking platform at the end, which is also not slippery and overall very comfortable to use when riding. At the front of the deck, there is a charge port, which has a spring preloaded door. The scooter uses four-arm suspension, which in my opinion is one of the best suspensions for the electrical scooters. Furthermore, both the rear and the front spring preload can be adjusted mechanically. Ability to stop from the high speeds is guaranteed by two large diameter disc brakes, one at the front and one at the back, while the grip on different surfaces is guaranteed by two 10-inch inflatable off-road tires. The scooter has six lights set up, being three lights at the back and three lights at the front. The front red one is just a reflector, it's not a light, it looks weird red at the front for me. All in all, my first impressions were extremely like not normally positive. I couldn't find too many defects, actually I just found a little scratch right here and then a little bit dirty part from brake fluid or something like that at the front. And that's basically it. Everything else is assembled like perfectly. The scooter looks fantastic and I was really excited to go and try riding it. Right off the first meters, everything felt exactly how it should feel when you get a new electrical scooter. It's not that the scooter feels like a beast, you know, that you can just go bananas, but it's fast enough. The suspension is very nice, you know, you can drive on little obstacles it's super soft and nice to do that and i think that's how like you know fun normal electrical scooter should feel like it accelerates fast enough to do wheelies it's not getting to throw you off the scooter by any means the brakes are good and stop in no time. It's good looking. I don't know. It's uh, unless you really look at it as an off-road scooter and you want to go hardcore off-road, that's actually a very very fun scooter to ride. All right, so I'm on speed three and I'm full throttle and this is exactly why this is not an off-road scooter but it's it's off-road capable scooter the biggest problem is that whenever your front tire bumps into anything like this and it's not spinning the rear one won't be able to push you forward even without my weight you see it will just dig itself in so that's full speed without the rider and if I get on the scooter, that's how fast we can go. And this is why this is not an off-road scooter. You should not expect to go with the scooter on the softest terrain, deep sand, super steep hills, because one one kilowatt motor at the rear is not good enough. No. However, it's a 
fun scooter to ride in light off-road, you know, SUV, that's what it is. <laughs> Overall, I have very, very good first impressions with the scooter. Super sturdy, literally nothing is wiggling, nothing is wobbling. The folding mechanism, oh, actually I tightened it up now a bit. So it, 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 it really holds up well. <clears throat> very comfortable, ergonomical grips. On some scooters, you don't have enough space when you're standing here, you know. It looks like handlebars are almost hitting you when you're riding off-road on this one i have plenty of space for riding the rubber deck while it's even sandy and wet it still grips your feet well the weight balance it's not bad i think if there would be a front motor potentially it would be a bit front heavy for now it's pretty well balanced it's a bit more heavy on the rear because of the motor of course but all in all, I'm really impressed. Suspension, never bottomed out, never bottomed out. I did drops there on the obstacles. I did jumps, never managed to bottom out the suspension or even if I bottomed it out, it doesn't make any, you know, it doesn't feel like it's bottoming out. So the bottom is soft and that's good. So these are really good qualities for an off-road scooter. The tires grip very well on the gravel, on the snow. You don't slip off on those tires. It's missing the front motor. That's it. That's the downside of Kugu Kirin G2 Max. I know in every video you ask me about the climbing abilities of the scooter and it's very hard to judge. But here we have this little uphill right here. And I will try to climb it now and then you will see yourself. It's almost making it to the top. Let's see. Yeah, as you can see, it's not really flying up that hill. Yep. So like an SUV, it's not a really off-road truck it's not a really pure off-road scooter because of this lack of power it's still however a very fun scooter to ride do tricks commute if you need to cross some gravel roads or anything like that you will have no problems with that because the tires grip well on gravel on snow and they actually don't make too much noise on asphalt either Talking about the maximum speed, I managed to reach 41 km per hour on the flat ground. I was going 47, 50 downhill and downwind on certain roads, but I think that really depends on the scooter weight and the riding conditions that you have around. I also have to mention it was a cold day, it was only 2 degrees above 0 Celsius, so maybe that has some impact as well. So. Now I have double suspension. I have a suspension on the saddle and I have a suspension on the scooter itself. And that looks fun. So one thing I want to figure out, let's say I'm done riding seated. I want to continue my trip while standing up. How much out of the way can we move the, the saddle? Let's try and figure it out. Well, you can do this, right? That is not helping me at all. Spent quite some time looking for the most comfortable riding position. So at the end I find, found out that actually it's better to leave the saddle like this. That leaves you more space for your foot right here. And you have access for standing on top of this as well. Just like this. 
kind of works in a way. Can we squeeze through this? Yes, we can. I was actually quite happy that I found a way how I can fold the saddle because for me riding seated all the time is not what my preference is. What do I think about the saddle? Well, I think it works great. It's pretty soft ride. If that's something for you, you know, no one will judge you. Maybe. So on this optimistic note, we will end today's review. I will just repeat one more time that it's a really great city scooter for aggressive riders that want to go faster, that want to be able to go over little obstacles, jump down the curb and so on and so forth. And the pricing is around 910, 915 euros. There will be a discount code in the description below if you want to find and buy it cheaper. Good luck with choosing your electrical scooter, ride safe and I hope to find you in my next video.